Hello, we have three things on the agenda today. I'm going to share my 15 paper, paper pumpkin projects with you. We are going to open up a brand new paper pumpkin kit so you get to see the contents of one of the kits and what's included in case you want to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. Of course, you'd be getting the March kit if you do that, just letting you know. And we're also going to do my alternative project. This one, let's see, something like this. Something like this, maybe not the exact same little decoration, but we're going to show you how to create this little treat using the cards from the Paper Pumpkin kit. In fact, maybe, maybe both. Maybe both. All right, so let me, and since I just said that, I need to get two different kinds of punches out as I say that. Because then if I'm gonna show you both, there's just different techniques. All right, so let's get started. My name is Kimberly Smith, I'm the Papered Chef. So if you wanna subscribe, if you're in the US, I should say that first because I'm only allowed to accept paper pumpkin subscribers from the US. If you like what you see and you are digging this kind of kit, only Paper Pumpkin subscribers can purchase refills. I've already purchased two refills to this kit. I'm going to show you the difference between what's in a refill and what's not. So if you want to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin, you'd be getting the March kit, which is going to be pretty cool, and it's going to go along with the Meandering Meadows designer series paper from our catalog, et cetera, et cetera. But it's not going to be this kit because you never know what you're going to get when you subscribe. But if you want to subscribe, go to my store over there, paperchef.stampinup.net. There's a link to subscribe to Paper Pumpkin. You'll get a little welcome gift from Stampin' Up! And you'll get a welcome gift from me. A welcome card from me. All right, so this is the kit. And it, it's really cute. So it's Sweet Springtime comes with, you can make three cards like this, three boxes like this, and three slimline cards. I, I call them mini slimline cards. The first thing you do, some people do, is open up the instructions and follow along. And you'll, if you do that, you'll get awesome projects every time. Because these are well designed by professional graphic artists. But the first thing I do is I never open the instructions. I pretty much never do that. I just look at the coordinating colors. That's the first thing I do. Coordinating colors, berry burst, crumb cake, daffodil delight, early espresso, garden green, granny apple green, pecan pie, petal pink, and berry vanilla. And I just start grabbing out my inks and my cardstock, and I just pile stuff all over my table, and I start making things with the kit. And I, I sometimes follow the instructions, and I'll show you that we'll start there with the cards that it made just right out of the kit, what you can do just straight out of the box. Okay, let me move this box here to make some room. All right, so right out of the box, you can make this little cute card because there's a frame inside. I did change where the flowers were a little bit. They put more flowers on the bottom because I wanted to use more of the flowers on other projects. You can either pop up this frame or just add some Winkostella to it like I did and glue it down. In fact, I added Winkostella to the entire card. The Winkostella is just a glitter brush. Unfortunately, it's not in stock right now, but get it while you can if it comes back in stock. I practically drink this stuff. So it's pretty cute just as it is. Now, look at this. I mean, the card has a cute backing. So sometimes you're like, well, geez, I want to take uh, the back and cut it apart and make extra cards out of it. So I did actually do that a lot. I cut the front off thinking I could use this for something else, and that's what I did a lot of. All right, so that's it. Put that one here. Next is... I have another, sim well, here, we'll just get out of my pile. Next is taking the front of the card, chopping it off. So chopping this front of this card off and making it smaller. And I, if you want to know the exact dimensions, I made it three and three quarters by five inches. But I, just, I still use the same matte layer for this one, the granny apple green. So I made the matte layer five and a quarter by four, but then I made this one one quarter inch smaller. And I used the Basics 3D embossing folder I hope you can see that, to emboss the front. So all you're doing is making this look a like a professional card. So this card here is, not that it doesn't, not that it's not professional because it was professionally designed, but this is lightweight, okay? And you're, you know, I would send this to my, say my auntie, okay? Somebody who's not a crafter. Now this one I would send to a crafter because crafters know about layers and like they expect layers like my crafty team members or something. I would send this one because this one is heavy duty. This weighs twice as much as that one because it's using daffodil to like cardstock. It's using an embossed layer and a granny apple green layer. I'm popping these up with dimensionals. And yes, do you know about this? Let's tell you about this. Let me find. Oh boy, I must tell you about this. Only Paper Pumpkin customers can get this. There's a lot of reasons to join now, even if you're like, hey, I can't get this kit anymore. 
Well, you could still get the refill for the kit. Maybe you can get this kit. In fact, I'm not sure if you can. Let me see who's here. Let me see who's here because some of my research assistants, my friends help me as research assistants. All right, I'll ask in a minute. Okay, so let me tell you about this. These are special dies. There's four of them. One of them cuts this. Let's see if it's in my little, here we go. Let me just get off for it because I've been using it. For, I'm putting this in this month's Sending Love Kit. You're all getting this shape. I'm die cutting this for you for the kit, which I have not mailed out those kits yet. I'm working on my retreat. Okay, so you get these four dies. Aren't these cool? Exclusive to Paper Pumpkin customers. These are called add-on dies. This little daffodil, where is it at? Oh, he's so cute. Look how cute it is. Now, of course, you could do the whole thing like cut it out, make this green, layer it up. Make this pop up with, the, you know, but I just thought I'm making the whole thing yellow. This one I used for the Valentine kit. This one's going to be good for next month's kit. Or not, my, no, this month's kit. March 10th. But if you subscribe on March 10th, this, this die is going to go in this month's kit. This month's kit. All right, so those are little dies. Anyway, I used it right here and I used it right here. So that is the, okay. So now let me just go and sit and say hi, because this is more a casual video where I just show projects. So let me say hi. We have Kathy here from Backyard Stamper. Oh, she's saying, don't forget to I'll bring an alternative project to Houston. Okay, I think I'm forgetting all these memos of what I'm supposed to do. So for Houston, I'll probably bring my little, one of my extra little treats because I'm making so many of them. So I'll probably bring one of them because they know only so much room in my luggage. But Kathy, is this kit available as a refill or a full kit is what I was wondering right now. Um, but I know if you do subscribe, you'll just get the March kit. So any of my customers. Hello, Edna. Hello, Edna Alvaro. Al Alvarado, sorry. Alvarado. Hello, Deborah from New South Wales, Australia. Sorry you can't get Paper Pumpkin in Australia. Right? That would be cool if they started there. Hello, Janet. Keep giving that feedback. Happy Friday, Janet. Hello, Elaine. Nice to see you again. Tracy, okay, you got your creep box already? Wow, that was so quick because I've only sent out a few of them. Yay for the happy mail. Yes, um, and you got your cow kit, card on blue. I have a lot going on right now this month. Tracy is referring to the Card on Blue kit. She's one of my Card on Blue Card Club members, so she's talking about she got this in the mail, the kit to make all this. You get the stamp set separately. She's talking about my Scan and Cut Retreat kit. I took the retreat kit off of the sign-up page. You can still sign up for the virtual retreat, but not the kit. I took that down off the sign-up page. But the sign-up page is linked in my description here under offerings. Well, no, over there under offerings. So I'm so glad you love your, your bags, um, the ones that... I'm going to show you guys another bag tonight that my mom made for a nursing home project or an assisted living facility. She made 16 bags, and we're doing birthday gifts. And that's why I need to get this project done right now. That's why I had to go live on this video late. Anyway, thank you. Boy, Tracy, you're super enthusiastic. Thank you. Hello, Lynn. And I know you're going to be excited to get your kit too, Lynn. It should be on the way soon. Hello, Denise. Nice to see you. Thank you for being a channel member. Okay, the refill is still available. I'll show you what the refill, the difference between the refill and the kit. You would just mean that you would need your own stamps, but all the other stuff will be included. So thank you, Kathy. Elaine is saying refill too. Thank you, Elaine, for researching. All right. And Deborah, people are offering you the love, so that's so cool. All right, now look at this. This one is, this one was the Basics 3D embossing folder. Now I want to just show you, like at an angle. I hope you can see it. This is this one was the celebration. How, how did I? How did the name elude me? Softly sophisticated or something like that. It was the celebration embossing folder, with all the little stippling in it. So okay, same idea though. This is the same exact design. Well, it's not the same exact design. But it's close because I used garden green here where I used granny apple green here. I used daffodil delight for both, but I changed up the designs. Look, this one's a vertical card, and I didn't put the white piece inside yet. I'm, I'm waiting to do all that because I'm in the middle of a big project. And then this one opens on the side. So you see how, you see how this goes? So this one is garden green. And then this one is the garden green and this one's the granny apple green all right so now we're gonna go now this one is taking the card that came out of the kit and just putting it on a pool party background that's all i did here take a pool party background a, a pool party card base because petal pink goes good with pool party you may remember when i read this that i didn't read pool party was a color but you can look at other kinds of designer series paper and by extension you can say okay well i know the pool party coordinates with petal pink so even though pool party is not listed on here 
as a color, it works because pool party goes with petal pink. So hope that makes sense. So that's why I came up with these. It's a, it's a subtle, it's from the subtles collection. That's kind of how I do the color coordination. And then all I did was take the gold paper, the gold foil, it's called. It was, I recently ordered a bunch of it for a future kit because I love, it said something like, whenever I see the words low inventory, I'm like, low inventory, order now. So I did order some of the gold foil. All right, now this one is more of a subtle card. It's like this, but without the extra layer. So again, I used the softly stippled embossing folder, but now look what happens when you don't use that extra layer. You get a more natural bunny look because I'm using crumb cake and I got the natural bunny look. I'm still embossing it. These are both embossed the same way, but this one has one extra, one less layer. And then I use the postage, this one, the post perennial postage or postage dies for that one. Okay. And now I'm going to, I'm just going to finish showing you the card, this card, and then I'll get to the 3d. So this card is again, straight out of the box using the frame. This is a frame that comes out of the box. An extra one of these that I used. There's a stamp set that comes in every kit. Now, every Paper Pumpkin kit, it, this month we're getting a free extra stamp set. But every Paper Pumpkin kit has one stamp set that contains sentiments and designs. Now, you you during the month of March, it's our anniversary month. Meaning how many, I can't remember how many years we're up to now. Paper Pumpkin. I think I've been around since maybe year two or three as a customer. I've been getting Paper Pumpkin a long time. Now, Paper Pumpkin is anniversaries in March, so they always give you an extra free stamp set in the March kit. And they show you as a sneak peek of what that looks like. They did tell us what the extra stamp set's going to look like. So that is what I did here. Is I, I used the stamps from the kit for the chick and the daffodils, and I used my brother's scan and cut to cut these out. And if, you're, if you have a brother's scan and cut and you have a Paper Pumpkin kit, be sure to watch the video on how to cut out stamped images and layer them as well using your brother's scan and cut because that's on my channel. Okay, now here is, I'll show you this tag later. Here is a card, and I'm, I'm kind of like, darn, I put this on the card because I decided to turn this into a tag. So, but now I do love this slimline card, but then I, I'm, I basically cut up all the slimline cards, which I'm going to show you at the end of this video after I open the kit. We're going to cut these up and make them into tags. So what I've done here is take, you make three tags out of one card, but I do love the slimline card. But now I'm wishing I hadn't used that tag on there because I need it. But isn't that cute? So that came just like this with the matching envelope. So now I have loads of these envelopes. It's the 10th year? Or is it the 11th? The 11th year? Okay, yeah, she's saying it's the 11th year. Wow. Thank you, Elaine Schneider. It's the 11th year. Lynn's excited. Her kit's coming from me. Happy mail, guys. I do I use Pirate Ship, which is a software to ship things. And when I ship things you get notified. And then you might get a second notification from PayPal because PayPal wants to make sure that I'm telling my customers that something's been shipped because you have customer protection when you pay with PayPal. So you might be getting two shipping notifications, one because I use Pirate Ship and one because PayPal makes sure I tell my customers that I've shipped it. So aren't these cute? This is all scan and cut. The bunny here is colored with petal pink. And these the little chicks are covered, colored with Daffodil Delight. There's one of the dyes and there's one of the daffodils. These little guys here, these extra dies, I just like to get extra dies. Like my, this is the postage one. This is from, I think it's called scalloped contour dies. I use those all the time. So let me show you what fits in here. This is, oh, you can put, you can also take the boxes. Oh, I didn't make these boxes, by the way. You're going to see when I open the kit, you're gonna be like, what? No way. Did you make these boxes from scratch? So like, no, I didn't make these from scratch. Why would I? Some people are like, can I scan it in and use this? Why would you scan this in, guys? This is, this is how it comes in the kit. It's already duotone. It's printed professionally. It's on cardstock. It has holes in it. It has score lines. If you're going to make one from scratch, just do a whole different milk carton template using my software that I've taught you guys how to use called the Template Maker application, right? So do you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't, don't go trying to scan this in and make another. Did you stamp the bunny on petal pink? No, no, I colored the bunny with the Stampin' Blends. I did this live in my workshop. I, I did this live as far as um, here. This is one. This is, I showed you this on my channel. We colored the petal pink bunny. We colored the bunny in petal pink, and then I did an extra layer with the scanning cut with the berry burst color. All right. So anyway, I was going to show you what's in here. Let me show you. This is what, 
All right, so enough of the boxes. These are made for you. You don't have to make the boxes, okay? They're already made for you. So don't go trying to make extras. Just buy some refills for crying out loud. Save yourselves time and aggravation and use what's already professionally made for you. I would not be making these from scratch even though I know how to make these from scratch. I know how to scan them in, but why would I? Because they're already made for me. All right, so there's all the stuff you can fit in this cute box. We got Krabby Patties. That's a nice candy here. We got the chocolate Ghirardelli chocolate bunny. This is going to be like Mary Poppins bag when you see all the stuff that goes in here. Jelly Bellies. Tootsie Rolls. Another Tootsie Roll. Another Tootsie Roll. A chocolate. Another chocolate. A Smarty. And Nerds. Okay? So, I mean, I had this all fitting in there and it shuts just fine. Look how much stuff fits in this box. It's unbelievable. Okay? So... Get the boxes, use the boxes. And now the last projects I did, this is going to be the tag. These are the ones that we're going to make together after I clear off my table in a little bit. And these each hold a Ghirardelli chocolate bunny. And I'll show you both styles after we open the kit because we need, we need more. I'm out of cards. I have no more cards to make, to make with these. Like I have all the, I've used up all these cards. So there's different kinds of little chocolate bunnies. And this was from the Scan and Cut, this little layer with the Happy Easter and the little chick. Okay, here's some more. I like this style here. What I'm, what I'm going for is this style, but I'm using this instead. This was, do you guys have the messages dies? It's an awesome die. I actually sold it, not sold it, but like put it in a mystery box. And now I'm like kicking myself. I want it back. Whoever bought that mystery box, I want my messages die back. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding, not kidding. But if you ever want to send me this shape, this is all I have, guys. This is all I have. Please, sir, may I have some more? So these are the perfect size. You know how you're like finding the perfect size for your design? And like these are, I think it's from the messages die, but that, that they were in a little box of crafty goodness. Anyway, so that's what I'm doing with these. This one's a little too big. It's great with the chick, but this one was the perfect size because I can use it with the bunny or the chick. All right, so I have a basket of those going. And there's two styles. So we'll, we'll make both styles. And so these I made two inches wide with my punches. And then this one... I made with the extra piece of card. So you can cut the card two, two, and then you have two and a quarter. And then these are the ones that I'm working on. All right, so that is my project. Now this one, my mom made all the bags for the people that are having a birthday, and my church is in charge of the birthdays for the month of March at the assisted living facility near us. So I'm going to show you this now, and I'll show you what's in this bag. So what I did is I took these tags, and then I... I this is what I'm saying. I'm like, darn, I put one on here. I need them all because there's only three. Hey, so Kathy, you're going to see me in Houston. Can you bring me? I need one more of these. Can you bring me one of these? Just this just this part. I have enough of the, the I, they don't all need to be. So I put down happy birthday from St. Francis Xavier Council of Catholic Women. So I put that on everybody's tag. And so this is for the bag. And now here's what's going in their little thing. I'm just going to show you what we're giving them. So we got the little, these are from Dollar Tree, Dollar 25 Tree. These cute little bunnies. Okay, this is little tea. Those of you that got my Scan and Cut Retreat Kit know about the little pyramid teas I put in the Scan and Cut Retreat Kit as well. You also got Easter eggs, by the way. Um, these are awesome. These are a little slice of heaven. Tootsie Roll eggs. I'm just giving you Easter inspiration, guys. That's what I'm doing right now. Skittles. Spring Skittles teas are from Sam's Club, and I put them into little baggies for everybody, and these are coming in your retreat kit as well. And then my neighbor helped me with the grass. Now, they're all getting, in addition, they're getting th they're getting one of these made with, it's going to look like more like, it's going to be like this with the chick or the bunny, because now I have a whole basket of chicks and bunnies, so they're going to be able to fit. So everybody's getting an extra treat that I'm making, a homemade treat inside of their kit. Oh, and the Smarties as well. There's Easter Smarties. And so, and if I find honey sticks again, I might throw those in there too. But the, the grass is up high, so it makes the stuff kind of stick out. Like we want the little bunny to stick out. And this is going to be the little tag. And I'm not sure if I'm going to hang the tag or just kind of put, when I say tag, I might just put it in there like, like so and not put a hole in it because then they can kind of use it as like a little Easter decoration. So that's what everybody's getting. You know what, Kathy, I do need a wreath. Sorry, I'm talking to somebody like I'm supposed to be talking to all of you, but I'm just thinking out loud. Because really, I just used the, the wreath, and I actually, if I used the wreath, there was the same amount of tags as there were wreaths. Anyone else going to Houston, bring me, bring me a chick. <laughs> I can't crack myself up. All right, hello, Denise. 
Elaine loves it. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, Deborah, sorry you can't get the Scan and Cut Retreat swag bag. If you're in another country, I'm not allowed to send it. Yeah, the tags make great bookmarks. But I, I'm Okay, so now let's open this up so we can start playing and making this. All right, let me move this. Where's the... Here it is. So I'm going to... My address is on the other side of this. And I specifically left it sealed on purpose because I didn't want to confuse you with... I have, like, right now I have two refills open and two kits open. And I didn't want to confuse you. Like, what's inside a kit? What's inside a refill? Right? Because you'd be like, what? You know, you'd be like, what is she showing me? Like, if the box is open. So I wanted to open this from the very beginning. Like, so from you see the whole box and what it contains. So there's... This is what the box looks like. So it's all shrink-wrapped in plastic. And so here's what you get when you order the kit. The first time you order a kit, you're going to get... Let me put this... Let's, let's find something to put this on. Here, we'll just use one of these craft cards. Okay. Do you see that? It's the first time you order a kit, you're going to get this, You're going to get a full kit, a stamp set. This is a stamp set and a stamping spot. Now, I don't use my stamping spots because I use my big... You know, bigger ones. And you're going to get probably something that looks like this, but maybe not exactly like this, but it's a smaller than a regular stamping block, and it's a paper pumpkin stamping block. And if you're six months in my my card club kit, you're all getting a stamping block, a chamois, a stamp case. You get a whole swag bag when you're in my, you know, my my club. Okay, so now, now then, that's the whole kit. You get the stamping block the first time. You don't get a stamping block every month. But the whole kit contains this and this. That's the only difference. This, this, and your free gift when you first join. This is what a refill contains. And I believe they're eleven fifty. But it's part of the whole kit. Obviously, you get this as part of your kit. But you can just order refills. So when you order refills, you're not paying the shipping anymore. Well, you're still paying the shipping on your regular order. But you're not paying for this part anymore. Because you don't need that part again. You only need this part. So that it's a very economical... And that's why I've ordered two extra refills. I think I, I was going to order one more, but now it won't be here in time. So I'm just, I'm going to go with the two I have and try to make everything I can out of this. So here's what you get. In every kit, you're going to get the adhesives that you need. It's not always the same kind of adhesives. This time you have tear and tape to make your boxes and you have twine to tie the boxes together up here like so. Okay, so that's what you get in this bag. And you always get different adhesives. Like this one is... Glue dots, which I always give to my team member, Nola, who likes to watch sometimes. She's on the West Coast. She likes to use glue dots. I don't like this kind of glue dots. And um, dimensionals, which I usually put in my mystery boxes because, again, I have so many other kinds of dimensionals. But these I have been using the heck out of. These are great little embellishments. These are little dots that I've been putting all over things. So I don't know if you noticed that. I should have pointed those out. See those cute little dots? They remind me of, like, little... Like Peter Cottontail, like little puffy balls, cotton balls. All right, so then you get, oops, got to put this back in there or I will lose these glue dots. So for this particular, now you're probably wondering, do you always get boxes? No. Usually you get nine cards, but a few times a year you get boxes. And these are the ones we're going to make right now with our project. These are the slimline cards. Okay, Lynn's saying she also loves glue dots. Okay, good to know, Lynn. You send me the stuff that you don't like, and I'll send you the stuff that I, that I don't like. The reason I don't like them, it's not that I don't like them, guys. I shouldn't say I don't like them, but I like using them. This is what I like using. I like using them off the roll. And not to digress, but this is why I like them for off the roll. These ones, you got to peel the backing off of them. But when you have a roll going on, you just do this. You just go like, you know, you just stick a whole bunch of stuff on there. And then, like, later you peel them all off and you put them on things and it's like, boom, 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 boom. So I just like to use them off the roll. That's, that's, it's not that I don't like glue dots. It's just I don't use them in that. Here, I'm going to use that on somebody's Easter present. All right. So three boxes. You don't always get boxes. Around Valentine's Day, there's usually a packaging one. And around Christmas time, there's usually a packaging one. So these are just so easy to assemble. I mean, I'm get, these are going to be teacher gifts. I'm not putting these in the other baskets because, number one, they won't fit. Number two, they're already getting a, a different kind of paper treat and lots of other treats. And I'd also, number three, I don't have enough. I just don't have enough to put them in. So I'm giving these to teachers. So these are going to be cool teacher gifts. So I'm just folding that out. I'm just showing you how quick this is to assemble. It's a milk carton. I mean, it should be easy enough to assemble, but I'm just showing you. Bada boom, bada boom. Fold these out, but they're going to go in, and then that's it. 
you're going to adhere it with the tear and tape and fold those in and then you have a milk carton. So I mean, it's super, super simple to assemble. Yay. Okay, back to this. Back to what's in the kit. Oh, I love these. The wreath. These are little frames that you're going to use for your cards, for your little... I, I didn't know these were frames because I didn't... Remember I told you I don't read directions? So what happened is I just started cutting them apart. I didn't know that... I was like, well, that's weird. Why'd they make it so hard for me to get to this little piece of grass? I was like, what's going on? And then what I... I didn't realize it was supposed to be a frame like this because I didn't even look at the cover of the box. I just ripped the whole thing open and just started crafting. And I ended up, it kind of came out cool, not even knowing that's what that was. See, I was like, that's a lot of work to get my little blades of grass out. <laughs> and I glued my grass on there. And later I'm like, oh, it's not a lot of work. It's supposed to be a frame that has the grass included. In fact, they were making it easy for us, not hard. So like, that's just something to keep in mind. One reason to see the directions because they will make your life easier. Now you do end up having these little nibs Nibs meaning because it's, you know, cut out by an effectory setting. Like these are mass produced probably. So you have like little tiny nibs sticking off of things. See? See, see, see like that. Okay. Anywho, let's get back to this. We got three of them. We already talked about these. We talked, to, oh, we talked about those. I showed you those. We get three of those. We have three of these. All right. And we have three... There's still more. There's three of these card bases. Now you always usually get in a kit nine card bases, but this time we got three boxes, three slimline cards, and three of these kind of cards. And then you always get a place for your embellishment. You always get something like this. So these are the ones I'm making into the tags. And then these are the ones I can put onto some of the Easter treats. And these two, they're great little bunnies to put onto your cards. And I could stamp those. I mean, I love those, but those are bigger for cards. They didn't fit on my treats. And then on the back here, you get the directions. And I always save this cardboard because I use it for my kits and my mailing and stuff like that. It's, it's really good cardboard. And then this is now how they give you the artwork. It used to be printed onto here, onto the plastic, the artwork. Well, once you start using the stamps, you can see the artwork. But now it's printed onto these pieces. And someone's like, I love this. And I was like, well, yeah, they, they give it to us this way now. I do like this better, actually. Because you can put them in a binder, and you can say, oh, there's all the stamps that I own. And it's a lot easier than trying to stamp them into a binder and put, you know, what you own. And then there's the directions, which I already talked about. All right, so that's what comes in a kit. Now let me get my trimmer. And you're going to take your trimmer and get this pieces here to do this project like so. So a very good value because it's a lot of crafty goodness. And... It's fun to have a surprise each month, I think, personally. So you're going to take your cards, and you're going to take them, and you're going to just... Hey, how you doing? Nola, nice to see you. Used up your high-speed internet, so you're... <laughs> oh, poor Nola. She's used up her bandwidth for the month. Her limited bandwidth. But glad you're here. I can't believe you watch YouTube with limited bandwidth. Okay, you're going to cut it to two inches. Okay? And you're going to do that again, and we're going to keep the bigger one. Right? You're going to keep the bigger one longer. Elaine says she wished she was going to Houston. It is, it is um, going to be a blast getting together with other demonstrators. You guys are my people. Well, everybody, all the crafters. It's good to get together with crafters. Hello, Edna. Hey, hello, Christina. Nice to see you. Christina, I don't think I've sent your card on blue little cow bag yet because we went to Joanne's today. Joanne, I mean, it's not Joanne plural. And I had to buy more cow fabric. I ran out of the cow fabric. So sorry I haven't sent your cow kit. But it is being made. My mom's making bags this weekend. All right, so you see what I did? You got that? It's two, two, and two and a quarter. So we're going to make two different kinds of treats. Two inches, two inches, two and a quarter. It's not going to be hard when you see the stamp, the punch, how big, how wide to make it, so... Because the punch is only two inches wide. So if you have a punch like this or a scallop tag topper punch. So this is called the fancy tag topper punch. So you can use any tag topper punch that Stampin' Up! sells. Which, of course, we don't sell anymore. But any ones that we did sell, I think they'll come back again. Maybe we still sell them. I don't know. But I don't think so anymore. But you're going to push it in. And it's you're going to push it in and get it to that point like that and squeeze. Okay? 
So that's how you know it's two inches because the punch is only two inches. Okay. Now, we're going to do it. We, don't punch yet. I shouldn't have punched yet. I should have done the scoring first. Oops, my bad. But that's okay because I have the simply scored so we can still do that part. Because once you punch, it's shorter than it should be. And then it's like, oops, my bad. All right, so open up this guy and do your scoring first before you do the punching. All right, so you have the two inch wide. We've already talked about that, right? Now you're gonna turn it. And this, this little guy is already scored at three and a quarter. But we don't want it to be scored at three and a quarter because we need the bottom to be flat. So we're gonna score at three and three and a half. Okay, score at three and three and a half. Okay, I think I'll write these directions later or else hopefully maybe Janet, if you don't mind writing these later for me, that would be so awesome because I don't have these written down anymore. This is just something I totally made up in my head and I, I just just did it. I don't even have it written down. So two inches, we, we, we did that. Now we, we turned it. And the reason we did three and three and a quarter is because there was already a natural score line there at three and a quarter. So that's why we did three and three and a half. I'm sorry. We, did th we scored at three and three and a half because it was already a score line. Well, what I did with that score line is I just went with it. I went like that. Let me just get this out of the way for a second. And I just did a little gusset. So I went like that. Wait a minute. And then back. Actually, more like that. Sorry. Yeah, like that. And then like that. Like that. So that the bottom was gusseted a little bit. You don't even have to do the bottom gusset. You could have just left it totally flat. But I kind of thought it looked cute, like having that little gusset at the bottom. And then you punch. Okay? And then you punch. Because really, if you don't... If you punch before that, you you end up with like this thing, like it's not it doesn't have the bottom. So it's all it's okay though. It's not bad. We're just gonna open it up and we're gonna we're going to take it and we're gonna figure this out. So if you punch ahead of time, you're like, oops, like me, then go like this and go, okay, it's supposed to be six and a half wide. So just make this one go right in the middle of that. See? Pull this back out. Three and a quarter. Just go, just figure out where the center is. See how there's like there's like nothing over there? But you still can find the center because the center is three and a quarter. So you just, if you do punch it, just go find one that's not punched and find out what size it was supposed to be. Ask me how I know. I've done that many times. Okay, now we're going to do this one. Same thing is for this one. We're going to score at three and three and a half. All right, so that's alternate project number two. We're going to do two alternate projects today. Well, they're both almost the same, but one involves this punch and one involves... A different punch. So that way, all right, so we have this one, and we're going to do the same thing. Go backwards and then forwards. Like backwards, forwards, you're making a little gusset. Okay? So far, so good. Let's move. Now we need this one. Same, same as this. Back and forward. Okay, now, say you don't have one of these punches. You're like, well, it's retired or I don't have any. Every crafter has a corner rounder. This corner rounder is awesome. I love it. It's in my Amazon store. My Amazon store, Amazon store, because I'm an associate or affiliate or influencer, I guess you call it. I'm an Amazon influencer. So down there in the description where it says Paper Chef's uh, Amazon store, I did put this punch. It's a corner rounder punch where you can do kind of industrial, like a bunch of papers at once. Not industrial, but better than the old corner rounder punches where you can only do like one piece at a time. See? So I've just punched out the corners. This isn't a big, you know, corner rounder, but it's still, you need a corner for the thing. And then I'm using what's called a name tag punch. And I have this in my Amazon store too. And I'm just going to center that in there and just sort of go like that and punch a little hole. Or you could just use a hole punch. So everybody should have a corner rounder and some kind of hole punch to make this kind of treat. So same, same thing. It's just a little wider. And you could have made it two inches, but it's a little wider. All right, now we need to do the belly bands. Now this belly band, we're, we're going to have to improvise because this one we don't have enough room for, but this one is easy. We'll do the belly bands on these. So we're going to take this card and we're going to chop it apart. Yes, we are. Because it's only paper and we're making some, we're doing something better with it than you can always use the front like I did. Why do you think I made so many cards with the front of the bunnies? Because I had no backs of the cards. They were all chopped up. And you're just going to go chop, chop, chop. Make them all three quarters of an inch and just keep chopping around until you, because you're going to need a bunch of these. You're going to make a bunch. Three quarters of an inch. 
Well, you only need one for each treat, but I'm going to need a couple for the one treat. So three quarters of an inch. Okay. The one that's wider is like a little. Um, yeah, that, that, that'll give us enough. All right, so let's now get back to the scoring. All right, so we're logically going to just look at this logically. And before I talk about the scoring, we're going to just simply look at this and go, okay, you have a treat, you've made a treat. You're going to turn it like this. Just do this before you start doing your scoring. I have two inches. How wide is it here? Oh, it's a half an inch, right? Flip it back around. Two more inches. Flip it back around. It's a half an inch, right? You get it? That's what, that's all I'm doing is I'm making a belly band. So we got two inches and there's the half an inch, two and a half. Go two more inches, four and a half, and then we go five. All right, I know you guys want me to write that down. So let me get... I'm going to write it down. And then also, you know, Janet sometimes types it up inside the description of the video. So we have... Okay, we're going to say cut two inches from card... Turn and score at three and three and a half. Okay, and now um, cut three quarters of an inch from card. Okay, so this will be from the card. This will be from the petal pink card. And this will be from the, the green card. We got... All right, you get it? So then three inches from the card, and then we're going to score at two. You'll, you'll have this all memorized, too, because you'll be making these so much that you'll be, like, easy to, to remember. Four and a half and five. Now, what's really nice is this is perfect. This card, well, this one's easy, and it's perfect because this little is already made to the size we need it. It was already five and a half because this card was five and a half. Isn't that awesome? So it just happened to be perfect for this little belly band. I'm just gonna go ahead, before we do the next one, I'm gonna show you this visually. Here, let me leave that there for you can hear. Hey, thank you, Lynn, for saying to give us a thumbs up. She's saying 31 are watching this live. And we only got 13 thumbs up, so I hope you're giving it a thumbs up. I might be a hot mess, but you gotta give it a thumbs up if you like paper pumpkin. All right, now let's take this, put a little bit of adhesive on here. And, oops, a little bit there. Who doesn't like bunnies? Not giving a thumbs up means you don't like bunnies. No, I'm just kidding. All right, there you go. So that's the belly band, and we'll put it on in a minute, but you get the idea. Easy peasy. These are, these are what I call a tag treat. So I've been, I've been making these for years for craft fairs and such. Tag treat all right all right let's put that over here we're gonna and we're, we'll figure out the we're gonna figure out the other one the little wider one in a minute we're just gonna do one more of these reinforcement teaching again two two and a half four and a half and five okay and then secure your belly band with your tape. Okay, now the next one is a little bigger because it started out wider. So you can't use the same measurements. And we're not gonna have enough if we just use the five and a half. We don't have enough because logically, this is, we just gotta do this logically. Why can't we do the same measurements? Well, it's just not gonna fit. Look, here we go. We know we know much we, we need it to be like, well, we need to be smaller. So we got this one that's wider. So how much wider? It's two and a quarter. Okay, good, two and a quarter. Okay. Now, how big is it around the side? That's the same. That's the same, half an inch. Oops, that was not two and a quarter. I mean, it was two and a quarter, but I didn't score it two and a quarter. That's okay. And then the next one's half an inch. So two and a quarter, and we got 
two and a quarter, two and three quarters. I just got to write this down. Now I got to add two and a quarter to this. Three. And we got, we're up to five. Okay, and now we don't have enough room, so we're going to have to like string them together. So, you see what I'm saying? You're going to have to do a couple of these and we'll just chop off the parts we don't need. Because one, it would not be enough. But this one is enough. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you have, that's why I needed that extra strip. I thought I, I thought I cut four of these. Did I not cut four? Maybe I only cut three. Okay, but you get the idea. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to get another one and you're gonna have to strip it together. So four, three, four, five, and then um, glue to, to there. Oh, there it is, the paper's right here. We'll, we'll do it now, you're gonna get to see it. Glue two together. So yes, it's a little extra work. You know, we just I just do the same thing over here. I'll just go, all right, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, blah, 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 five. I have way more than I need, but this one's a little bit neater. All right, so you basically just, see? If you don't do something, you're gonna be like, see, like, oh, how do you attach it together? Well, this is how you attach it together. You could, well, you don't need to waste all this. You know, but I'm just trying to tell you like, that's how you can do it. Okay, you're not going to use all these pieces, but I'm saying you're just going to use some extra. So what I would do is I just need a little extra little corner over here. So what I would probably do is just chop this little piece off here. Maybe like so. And just do this little thing. I would just glue that to there to make it easy and glue this to there. Does it make sense? I, I would just extend the one. I really need this flap. That's all I need. But I can't put this flap alone. That flap's not going to work alone. It doesn't have any place to attach to. But yet, I don't want to have, like, seams all over the place. I'm saying seams, like seamstress seams. I don't want to have seams all over the place. So I'm just doing that to kind of put that along the same side. So you're just kind of daisy-chaining them. Now, you could just, if you had longer paper, obviously you would use longer paper, but we're using the paper pumpkin kit. I'm trying to show you to just use what you have with the lengths that you have. So that's what I'm trying to show you is use what use the materials that you have and you can get by. All right, so that's that. And now, ready for, let me move this out of the way. Get, I'm done with all this. Done with all that. Put this over here. Oh, I got two more likes. Some people think I'm crazy now and they think, they said, we better like her video. All right, now let's go like this. And just go like this with the seal plus. I do realize a lot of you are watching on your YouTube television screens and it's hard to like, you're not actually even touching your phones and it's hard to hit like and all that. So I understand. But later, if you give it a like later, that would be awesome. So I'm pushing this, I'm holding the bottom down like that. I'm pushing it on. I'm gonna do it again, don't worry. And you wanna put this flat onto the table, put your fingers in there, Flatten out the bottom again. Like it was gusseted, but then I flatten it out. Now it's gusseted again, so it's it kind of has a little bit of give to it, but I just flatten it out just to get my hands in there. Like so. Okay, and we're gonna do that again a couple times. Where's my big one? Is that the big one? And then I should have another one that's not so big. That's the extra piece. Yep. You're going to open it up, put some adhesive here and adhesive here. You're going to turn it around. You're going to push this down. So there is a front and there is a back to these. Give it like flatten it for a moment just to get it in there. But it's still gusseted on the bottom, but you're going to flatten it just for a moment. Now you have this little part where the seam is. I would call that the back and I would decorate this as the front. So whenever there's a little seam, let's see. Right here, where the, where the thing is the seam, that's your back of your project. And that's the front of your project. Okay, let's get rid of this piece because it keeps on getting in my way and disguising itself as my belly band. Here's my belly band. Like, where is my real belly? Will the real belly band please stand up? Okay, 
putting this on there, pushing it down, pushing my hand under there, and you end up with a whole basket of them, and you just keep on, I need some more belly bands, and then you decorate the next part, which I'll show you how we're gonna do this part now. And then we're gonna do the string. So the next step would be, let's clean up some space here. We just make a little space. We're gonna get early espresso from under my pile, like so. <coughs> and my silicone mat. So early espresso. Let me get rid of some stuff here. Open that up. Okay, we got the Daffodil Delight because it's one of the coordinating colors. And we have the last of my little tiny shapes that I'm sad I don't have enough of. And we're gonna put a little bit of... She likes the purple bunny. Where is my purple bunny? Oh, here's my purple. You like the purple bunny? That was fresh freesia. I colored that with fresh freesia. Thank you. So I'm putting a little bit of ink on there. And I showed how to color that in my scan and cut tutorial. I showed how to cut, color, and layer stamped images in that tutorial. So we colored the bunnies. We did all that stuff. And then since then, I made a lot more projects with all the bunnies and the daffodils and the chicks I cut out. So I've been using the heck out of the shapes that I cut out. But now I think I have enough for my project. Another project I'm trying to get off the list before Houston. <laughs> it's like between mailing the scan and cut retreat boxes, mailing my card club and we ran out of cow bags, mailing my sending love workshop kit, doing swaps for on stage, and doing the nursing home project. Oh, and I had to make 60 bags for the kids at the school. And then I'll be doing teacher gifts. Yep, yeah, seven projects. That's, that's all. All right, let's see. We need... The Happy Easter stamp. That's what I'm looking for right now. It should be on the stamping block. Under this pile. Here we go. And I found it. Here it is. So it's already inked up, but you would typically just, you know, stamp it onto a piece of scrap paper. I'm trying to find a piece of scrap paper. Is this scrap paper? Here we go. This is scrap paper. Don't, don't put it on your wreath itself, but there we go. It's a little piece. So you just stamp it, Happy Easter, onto scrap paper. Just to make sure you have a good stamped image, which is good. And then you're going to stamp it onto your little pieces. My little perfect size pieces. It's always good to have a whole bunch of die cuts, and then you have a lot of options. Okay, and then we have our little, we got to do our ribbon part. Let's get rid of this for a moment. I'm still working on this. So I'm just going to move it off to the side so I can do it again when the video's over. All right, so we have, let me move that off to the side. We have these little treats we just made here. Where is it? Here we go. And here we, I know there's some blank ones. Here we go. So this is the front, like, like I said, that would be, the front, or oh, that's the back. So this will be the front. I don't know. I have I have a whole bunch of stuff. So here's one. We'll just use that guy. I have a whole bunch of crafty goodness. So what you're going to do is put him down there at the bottom and put like this. Okay, let's see. Is there any, this one should be, this one stamped a little better. How come that fit earlier? Oh, maybe it, maybe that wasn't the one that fit earlier. Maybe it was the chick. Sorry. Or here. This is cute. Here we go. We're just gonna use this one. All right, because they don't. They're not all gonna be the same anyway. That'll work. I'm like if earlier. My bunny fit on my. You know what? My bunny did fit, but it didn't have a thing. But I thought I had a bunny that did fit, and that did have. This little chick works better than the bunny. But I really thought I did get a bunny to fit on here. Maybe I did, but without the sentiment. Either way, it's still a good size sentiment. So you're just going to kind of lay this around. So let's see. This might be good down here, or it might be good up here. I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to put this one up here. I like I like it at the top for this one. 
And then I can tilt the flowers a little bit to the side. Or I can use this with the chick. Let's see. I'll show you how to color a chick because that one needs to be colored. Okay, I've already colored the, the beak in pumpkin pie and I've already colored the, the little feet in pumpkin pie because I do everything in stages, as you know. And all I'm doing is taking my Dark Daffodil Delight. I think I basically need to cut more chicks out of my skin and cut and make them all chicks because the chicks will fit on this little treat the best. So Dark Daffodil Delight, or I probably do have enough bunnies and if I can just maybe, maybe put the sentiments on the other side. And then you're gonna get the Light Daffodil Delight and do a circular motion to bring the dark to the light. You can either do a circular motion or pull the dark into the light. And where did I get that chick? He is from, he or she is from the stamp set that came in this paper pumpkin kit. So you basically, I mean, this one just a little bit at the side, getting some sentiments from the side here. Oh, it doesn't get any cuter. You gotta add some Wink Estelle to your chick. Oh, by the way, this, the blends are pretty thick. I mean, the, the brush tip, I was using the brush tip. And there is a thin tip, but the, the little beak and everything, it's, it's just better to use the marker for the feet and the beak. And that's why I have it sitting out. And I did stamp in Memento Black. It doesn't run in with the blends. All right, so now we're going to, we can tie and we can use both a tie and a ribbon. So we're going to do both. I just pulled that out of my other box so I wouldn't have to go find the thing. So let's leave that like so for a moment and get out the petal pink ribbon. This does not come in your kit because it just doesn't. It just, this, this is from the Zany Zoo or Zoo Crew, whatever. Zoo it's in our it's in our catalog. It's something like the I don't know ribbon duo pack or whatever. It has I was gonna show you that it has lemon lime twist with it as well. This is a double ribbon pack, petal pink and lemon lime twist. Look for it in our annual catalog in the zoo section. Zoo crew, zany zoo. Anyway, I'm gonna put it under there, like so. So you see what I did? I just folded it, I just took the ribbon. Hello, Pat. Nice to see you. Pat from Oklahoma is here. And then Lynn said she saw a purple bunny. Is a... Thank you, Lynn. Elaine saying she loves it. Thank you for the thumbs up. Okay, so the second punch is on the Stampin' Up! Trio punch. Thank you. So Nola's saying there is a corner rounder on the Stampin' Up! Trio punch. Thank you, Nola, for that. I forgot about that. I don't know what I did with that punch either but there is a corner rounder on the trio punch. So that's good to know. I do, I do have that. I just don't know what I did. I mean, I know what I did with it, but it's just not here. So I'm flipping that around and pushing it up like that. Now I'm gonna do this little guy. After you do the little petal pink, you can tie the little bow because it just stays on better once the ribbon is on there. This, this might look hard, but it's an actually super easy treat, but I hope I didn't make this look hard because it's really like like the easiest treat you could make like in the world, and you can make like hundreds of them for craft fairs. Put them in cute little stocking stuffer bags with other little things, and people just love them. They're very good sellers of mine at the craft fairs because I do make them bigger than this, though. All right, so that's all you're going to do with the ribbon or with the twine. And now I'm going to put my bunny in last. Okay, both awesome bunnies. So sea salt, caramel, milk chocolate, or just caramel milk chocolate. Both are awesome bunnies. So there's a variety. Actually, I even have a better variety pack I'm even using. So I'm just going to fold the, the package of the bunny over there and get it in there. And that's what I'm up to. I'm going to be making a bunch of these. I'll try to take a picture when I'm all done. I, I wanted to mix it up. Maybe I could put like some just like this because the bunny... 
And then what I could put like the Happy Easter on the back. Because I do like the bunny on some of them. And I have so many like pieces cut out. And I also like, I may even use some of these guys from the kit on some of them. And then I'll, you know, like I said, I could just mix it up. But the, the, the treat's the same, but the presentation of it might be a little different. And that way they can be like picking out their bag and be like, oh, I want the one with the purple bunny or I want the one with the petal pink bunny. But earlier I had this fitting on there. And what I think happened is I may have, when I stamped the Happy Easter, I may have stamped it up a little higher so it didn't get blocked. But nope, it doesn't fit. So it must have been, it must have been on that treat. There we go. That's what it was. That's, it does fit, but the bunny has to go on this treat. There you go. So you get the idea. Just jazz them all up. Super cute. And then when you put your bunny in there, it'll stay. And then you can add a few of those little dots onto your, onto your project. And that's, that's a wrap. Let me just see if I have any of those little dots. I already have like two or three packages open, so... I don't want to open anymore. Yeah, we're not going to open anymore right now. But then you're going to, you're going to, that way you can give somebody something homemade. There we go. It did fit. And it was a different style treat. So that makes more sense. Because what happens when you punch this down, right, it makes the whole thing, it makes it like shorter. And that's why the Happy Easter didn't fit. But I was like, I could have sworn there was a bunny with the Happy Easter on it. See? Proof for that. So there you have it. That is how to do that treat. So we have covered in this video, if you just got here late, we covered 15 projects I had already made with the paper pumpkin kit. And I have so many Easter cards now between this and the Flight and Airy Designer Series paper and all of the Mother's Day and Easter cards we made during our celebration workshop. You've already seen a lot of those. So I have so many Easter and spring cards now. So we got to see all the different kinds of card styles. Then what we did is we talked about the different kinds of boxes that are in this kit. Then I opened up a kit and we dumped this one out and showed you how much candy fits in it and all the alternative projects. Then I showed you three or four styles of my tag treats and showed you that I'm working on a whole bunch of those. And I showed you what comes in a paper pumpkin kit. And then I showed you how to make these two start to finish. <clears throat> so those are pretty much, I didn't leave anything out except for how to layer and cut these, which is in my scan and cut tutorial recently that I did where I, I showed you how to stamp, cut, color, and layer the stamped images. So that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you, Laura Ann. And um, she, Pat's saying she loves the bag my mom made with the bunnies. These, a few of you guys, if I have extra, might be getting these as their mystery crafty surprise. Just saying. I just got to see if I have extras. Some, I'm doing mystery craft surprises soon as part of my next kit. All right, so coming up this weekend, I'll be starting the Sending Love kit projects. And then I'm going to Houston, and then the week after, I'm gonna be doing the card club. So we do that in the third week of... Okay, how big do I make them for craft fairs? Okay, Lynn, I have a whole... If you look up tag treats on my channel, I have a whole bunch of these. I make them two inches wide, but they're just taller. They're just a little taller than this. Not much taller. I just used the size of the card today. That's why I was doing it that size. And I, I make them different heights. Let's put it that way, Lynn. They're not all the same heights. But anyway, let me summarize. So that was... Oh, I already summarized. Sorry. Let me just say that I appreciate all of you guys watching. And I hope you have a great evening. And I hope to see you again later this weekend with some other crafty tutorials. That's all for now. This is the Paper Chef. Bye-bye.